SCARS presents Survivor Hour, where survivors of child sexual abuse share their stories, their journey, and their path to healing in the hopes that by revealing their secrets, they can inform our community and help to save our children from child sexual abuse. Thank you for coming back, everyone. We are uh, talking to um, one of our very brave survivors, Mickey Parfit. Um, we're so grateful that she's here. You know, the first segment, Mickey, you talked mm -hmm. about um, the aftermath of mm -hmm. the abuse, your drug addiction, and some of the things that, understandably so, that you have struggled with. Um, tell us about what happened. Tell mm -hmm. us your story of abuse. So uh, my abuser was introduced uh, to me by a close family member, actually. Um, when this man was introduced to my family, I think he saw the vulnerability, you know, um, and over a short period of time, um, kind of just, I guess, brainwashed me into thinking mm. that Grooming. that this was okay. Right. You know what I mean? Although I was told I should never tell anybody, but it's okay, mm. right? Um, the first of, the first attempt was after a Dracula movie, Dracula, Bram Stoker's Dracula. And I, my, my siblings and I used to love watching horror movies together. That was the one thing they would do with me because we have a big age gap between us, but they would watch horror movies with me. So I was so excited to go see this horror movie. And, um, at that time, my sister had moved out, was in love with me. And when we, when uh, my abuser took me back home because by that time he was living in my house. Oh wow! In my in in a room in my house, and um, took me home and parked the van in the yard and and made his first move on me, for which he was unsuccessful. The first attempt, it was just touching and fondling. Um, it, it, well, it was successful in his eyes. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and and it was not good for no. you, even that part. And within a short period of time, again, um, he was able to have sexual intercourse with me. Wow. Um, and How old were you? With me. I was 11 years old. Wow. wow. Yeah. Um, and I mean, the thing about sexual abuse is like from the age of 11 to 17, the thousands and thousands of times that I had to have sex with this man. And I, um, I remember not going to school for so long. Wow. I, I would hide in this cave on the railway trail. What were you feeling? And like, just alone. Yeah. Just alone. Till this day, like, that's probably my yeah. most hardened yeah. memory is what I was doing to just try to be safe. Right. You know? And that cave is still there. Wow. You know? Wow. But um, um, I dropped out of school when I was 16 because I, I just couldn't deal with the stress. Um, and I tried to commit suicide. Um, I went to child and adolescence. I, I tried to commit suicide at home one day. Um, my mom came home and found me and called the ambulance. I started child and adolescence. I uh, went on antidepressants. Uh, my abuser got a hold of them. Wow. And because I was now 15, 16, and I'm like, these four, I'm starting to like boys my own age. I want a boyfriend my own age. I want to do things that other kids are doing. You know what I mean? And I wasn't doing any of that. Like my childhood, my adolescence was none of that. You know? How old was he when you were 11? Oh my God. Do you God. remember? 27, 28, something like that. You know? Um, so essentially stalled the majority of your adolescence. He yeah. took my entire adolescence, yeah. not the majority of it. He took my entire adolescence. And when he got a hold of my antidepressants, he would, I've got the magic key. So whenever I would act up and whenever I would rebel against him, he would be like, I've got the magic key. You need to take a pill. Wow. So I deny myself medication for the majority of my adult life and, and, and young adult life because of that, you know, and, um, um yeah, she controlled and manipulated. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. And, you know, um, Somewhere in there, he touched people in my family. Wow. You know? Let me ask you a question. Were there, looking back now, were there any adult, what, was there anything that you would have wanted to see adults do differently? The adults in your, in your life, any teachers? Mm -hmm. Like, did people just not pick up on the signs, you think? You or know, you were missing from school? Did, the, I mean, no, that wouldn't, prob that would not happen today because yeah. so much, you know, we've done so much good in terms of um, awareness, but. 
The crazy thing is, is that it seemed like everybody in St. George's knew what was going on in my household and was using it as a conversation piece instead of speaking to the right people. Wow. So I sorry. was so traumatized by that. I've never moved back to St. George's since. When I left, I was like, you know, like my aunt and her friends and you would hear the buzz because it would come back to me and, and I was labeled the girl with the 30 year old boyfriend and then people start talking about what was going on in my house and and then it, it all of it end up being true and I'm like, but how did you guys know and you yeah. didn't tell anybody yeah. you just was sitting okay. off amongst yourselves, you know, but with regards to my parents, um, um I don't know how to feel, honestly. Yeah. You know, do you think, Mickey, because of the lack of awareness and education around this topic, that people would have been one of the reasons people didn't react responsibly? I, I think what from what I've heard from the thousands of survive, survivors, there were people that didn't really even know it was wrong. They yeah. didn't they didn't see anything wrong with it. They blamed the children. Mm -hmm. Why grown adults would want to have relationships with young children. It was it because they just they weren't aware. They, there was no education. Mm -hmm. And that's how I felt why I started this organization. Because I could not understand why the grown ups mm -hmm. in our life were reacting that way to our own case. Yeah. Do you think yeah. that was the case? Yeah. Years I ago? mean my People even did, my abuser took me in spaces where he would treat me the way that he would treat me behind closed doors and there were other adults around. Do you know what I mean? So that's, and, and that's crazy. I mean, I brought that up in my trial. I was like, listen, I know that these people knew what was happening to me because he would be this way with me in front of, like totally not different. And I know the difference because when we were in front of other people, I was just a child. Just go sit over there and, and sit down and wait till I'm done. Just like an adult and a child, wow. right? You know what I mean? So, yes. you know, um, yeah. We have to stand up and we have to intervene when we see adults um, not doing the right thing. Um, when we see children that are in pain, um, you know, we have to look out for those signs. And that's why education is so important. Uh, we didn't have that years ago and there's no excuse now. Now we are, we are providing yeah. this platform for people to understand that it is not okay. Yeah to sexually harm children yeah. and use children for your own sexual pleasure. Exactly, yeah. Wow, you are so brave. Thank you. Adults should have intervened. Adults should have intervened. I mean, what would you, know, what the, would you have, good. what would have been helpful for an adult to do or say at that time? It would have been helpful to know that this man actually had previous interactions with a child and that the public, the general, some of the general public actually knew that he was a pedophile, mm, wow. you know? So we have this, do we have this register now? We have this register for yeah. sex offenders. It's not public, but, but we have one. But like years ago, that could have saved my life. Right. You, I'm hoping because, you know, even I heard the buzz, you know, I, and obviously in my later teen years or whatever that, you know, this man was known for this. You know, um, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, we have to understand that a sex offender is not safe. No. A child sex offender is not safe around any child. No. Alone. Yeah. Ever. And, and we need to talk more about this so we actually know these people, because there are still people out there, they're free, you know, they're out and about still doing what they're doing. You know, or that yeah. just because they've been to jail or had a consequence that it's it's not a done deal. Exactly. It's not over. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we know that a sex offender doesn't stop with one child. No, my this is a sickness. Yeah. He was already <laughs> locked up for indecent exposure, you know, and I was at the time I didn't pay too much attention about it because I actually was, you know, hooked on drugs and things like that. But after I turned my life around and I, and somebody told me that, and I was like, are you serious? You know, a slap on the wrist. And, and that just even put fuel, added fuel to the fire for me of like why I needed to do this. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Why I needed to take him to court and stand up for myself. Yeah, and protect other children. Yeah, exactly. Okay, everyone, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. We'll be back after these messages.